This thing's rowdy. Hello, people of interwebs. To your favorite garage dweller, Sarah here with another truck review. And today I have the 2021 Ram TRX. If you are not familiar with what this is, it is basically the Jason Momoa of trucks. It's just big and beautiful. I love the fact that they located the amber LED clearance lights inside the functional hood scoop, which makes this thing look even more terrifying coming down the road. Underneath this flame red bonnet, I got you my UK viewers, is a 6.2 liter supercharged V8. The f***ing Hellcat engine in a Baja truck. America, or at least 58% worth America. And they're technically owned by an Italian car company. So it's like getting really good Italian food in New York. I love how the headlight wraps around into these vents right here on the fenders. This thing's eight inches wider than a standard Ram. This particular T-Rex is fairly loaded, does have these optional 18 by nine inch beadlock capable wheels. This is actually not a beadlock ring. However, the wheel itself is designed that you can remove that and bolt an actual beadlocker onto this wheel. And they're wrapped in 325 65 Goodyear Wranglers. That's a 35 inch tire on this truck. And behind these wheels, which on a side note, they have a lot of concave to them. I actually like that. Lies a 15 inch front rotor. It's a massive brakes on this truck. It should stop fairly well, I hope. And on top of that, the suspension that's behind it, they're Bilstein remote reservoir gas shocks, but there's 13 inches of travel in the front, 14 inches of travel in the rear. These down here actually look like running boards, but they're more for body protection than helping you get in and out of the truck. And they're kind of awkward to step on. I mean, there's not really a lot of material to get your foot onto. The TRX logo on the side of the bed takes up damn near two thirds of the rear fender. It's huge. And speaking of huge, these exhaust tips are five inches in diameter. And don't worry, the tire carrier back here is optional if you wanna do truck type things with this. It also has a tow package as well. But personally, I think the tire carrier is absolute must. I mean, it fits the overall styling of the truck. You, you just need it back here. This particular T-Rex is fairly well loaded up with options. It has what's called the level two group, which gives you a ton of tech and luxury features in here, which makes this truck just shy of $90,000. This is a huge back seat. This is massive. I have to see all the way back right now. And I, are you kidding me? It's so big. These seats are ventilated, heated. It's got a heated steering wheel. Oh, no way. The rear seats are heated and ventilated also. Uh, bolstering wise, there's not much in the form of the bolstering department, which Considering what this truck's capable of, it would be nice to see a full-blown race seat option in here. There's a 400 watt AC power inverter with a regular outlet. There's a lot of nice materials all throughout though. We have the Alcantara suede in the center console, which also has this little T-Rex plaque that has the build number and your VIN number of this specific truck. Even that is Alcantara suede, seriously? Oh my God, that is so adorable. There's a little hieroglyphic inside the bottom of it, of this truck and an actual Tyrannosaurus Rex. I thought it was just gonna be the history of Dodge trucks in there, but that is such a cute Easter egg. I love that. I was hoping it'd be like dinosaur eggs or something cute in this one, since there's a full blown Tyrannosaurus in that. No. I'm a big fan of the fact that the shift lever is located down here in the center console and not a little rotary knob on the dash. I like the big rubber floor mats in here. That's nice. Storage underneath the seat. All right, let's fire this thing up. You hear this thing? It's like the automotive equivalent of an angry jacked viking drunkenly saying go f yourself and spitting in your face at the same time 
As far as the tech features go in here, I already reviewed the Ram Eco Diesel that was fully loaded, had the same infotainment and stuff in there. So if you guys wanna check out that video, there's a link up above to that as well. Uh, the gauges on here, there are a few other little Easter eggs because this is the T-Rex that are T-Rex specific, like the fact that it says T-Rex on your gauges. And right now I'm on the off-road menu. There are some features you can go through and check out inside here. A lot of this information is also on your infotainment screen in the center of the truck. And then you can go down here, there's a bunch of performance menus you can go through, as well as the fact that you'll also notice your average miles per gallon will usually be in the single digits. One last thing before we get going, the drive modes. Down here below the start button, you have a button that says T-Rex. You press that, it then brings up another menu over here on your center console that's unique to the TRX. And you can see over here the changes that it will make depending on the mode that you have it in. You can go from sport, or you can put it in snow, it's kind of fun how it changes it cooler color temperatures. That's probably not intended. Mud and sand. Now, in addition to these changes you see right here on the screen, what it's also doing is it's gonna change where the power is distributed front to rear, depending on what mode you have it in. It's kind of beat up out here, some rough terrain, but it looks like a perfect place to do some Baja type stuff. So. I'm gonna go into the TRX menu and I'm gonna put this thing in Baja mode. And uh, it's got automatic four wheel drive, so it'll just do its magic when it needs it. And uh, let's let it eat. Woo, f this thing's rowdy. with how fast this is. Oh my god! Oh, 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 what? That's really fast. Oh jeez. Oops, I got air. <laughs> oh, it gets, it's getting sideways, like four wheels drift sideways. I can't even talk fast enough to process what this thing is doing. <laughs> I'm supposed to be reviewing this thing right now and talking about the way it drives, but I don't even know what to say. I will say this though, this is making me a better driver than I actually am. like modulate the throttle and actually just use the gas pedal as a steering wheel. This thing is so easy to do stupid stuff off road with. I gotta be careful right here. There's all kinds of, I mean, this is like a perfect section to test the articulation of the suspension. I also noticed this has a great turning radius for a truck because I had to turn around earlier in a really tight section, probably as wide as a two lane road, and it almost made the entire turn, just barely went off the edge of the road on both sides. I'm trying to find some obstacles to drive this thing through other than just blasting through the dirt because it does have 11.8 inches of ground clearance and it can pour it up to 32 inches of water and there's not gonna be any water out here. I'm gonna put it in rock mode, just so I can try something different. This isn't rock, but, and should I lock the axle? Rear axle lock, sure. Okay. 
Okay, this is scary. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Okay. I climbed a mountain. I know some of you that are like avid off-roaders are watching this and probably laughing at me right now, but I'm sorry, this is scary and I've only been driving this truck for a day. It's not my truck. Now what do I do that I'm up here? I don't want to go down any of this. I don't want to go. Why did I come up here? We'll go to forward camera and I will try not to die. I'm relying 100% on my trail cam. Oh, now I can see. All right. This is absolutely terrifying. There's really no need for downhill assist because I have a, I have a foot that is capable of operating a brake pedal. Woo. Might have just puckered my butthole a tiny bit with that one. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Here's where the approach angle is going to matter because this is a steep boy. Let's try not to rip the front bumper off, shall we? Not a problem. All right. Hello, welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Under the hood of the T-Rex is none other than a Hellcat engine which is a 6.2 liter cast iron block aluminum head supercharged V8 that produces 702 horsepower at 6,100 RPM and 650 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPM thanks to a twin screw blower running at 11 PSI. This is the biggest air filter box I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, it makes sense for what this truck is meant to do that you'd wanna make sure you got clean air going into the engine. But geez, I mean, the engine, if you want to look, it's, uh, it's way out inside there. It actually looks kind of tiny inside this big truck. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. I'm going to put it into sports mode. And this does have launch control. It may or may not be utilized. And on top of that, there's actually a cool down mode as well. That's fun right there, especially if you're in the desert. You're definitely going to need that. Ready? Oh my god! Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that was insane! Good enough! Holy f Typically, this is the point in the review where I put the vehicle up on the lift and we check out what's underneath. First up, out back, you have a Dana 60 rear axle with electronic locking rear diff. Everything back here is massive in overkill, so it can take a pounding. The rear Bilstein shocks have these massive bash bars, shields built into them to protect them. And just look at everything back here. I mean, it is so beefy. This aluminum drive shaft steer near as girthy as a telephone pole. There's also a Bilstein damper mounted up here on the top of your rear axle. Keep that nice and stable and planted when you're giving this thing the business. You won't have any axle wrap. Up front, you can see there's massive powder coated skid plates that protect the front end. I'm glad they went with the ZF transmission in this truck. I just think it transforms the driving experience on this thing. But what I was curious is what kind of transfer case can hold up to this kind of torque and power. And there's a sticker right here. It says Bog Warner. There's a number after if that means anything to anybody. Are you kidding me right now? Look at the size of these lower control arms. I mean, this has got to be damn near a 27 millimeter bolt head. That's huge. It's time for the braking test. I don't want to do this. Nobody behind me. Ready? Oh, oh my God, this hurts. I pulled 1.52 G's on the braking test. Yeah, if you're wondering about the average fuel economy, the average fuel economy on this truck is who cares because you might as well not talk about it. Around town though, this is definitely a comfortable truck to cruise around in. I actually enjoyed driving around the streets with it, even though most of the time it was spent doing ignorant stuff that would draw lots of attention because this truck just, that's what you do with this truck. You do ignorant shit that draws lots of attention. And it's really fun.
fun. This truck will reduce your age by 30. And if you're not 30 years old, then it will make you uh, an egg. So if you guys never seen my vehicle reviews, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score. That was a rating of one to five beans. Basically a feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the 2021 Ram TRX is getting a rating of 3.2 beans. Gunshots, we're getting shot at out here. It's Charlie everywhere. This truck defies math and science and such. Anyway, next is the meatball score. It is a rating of one to five meatballs based on a vehicle's ability to tackle off-road obstacles that look like chunks of meat. And this is kind of more of a Baja-ish review, but either way it gets meatball score and it's getting a rating of 3.9 meatballs. It's crazy off-road, it's crazy on-road. This truck just, just insane. Just leave it at that. Next is the cookie score. It is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's an assessment of value. And this $89,000 Ram is getting a rating of gunshots. 3.9 cookies. This is kind of hard to assess this truck because it's an absurd amount of money but it's damn near a trophy truck. And if you were to try to build one of these and throw a factory warranty on it, good luck trying to do it for that price. Lastly is the penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And obviously this thing is getting a rating of five penguins. Are you kidding me? Why would it be less than five penguins? The entire time I've been driving this truck, I've been in tears laughing. It is absurd. And this makes me happy to be a car enthusiast because something like this exists. End of discussion. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.